Right, in our health club this morning, we are looking at migraines. And um, my expert is Dr. Bright Che Redu. He's from Max International. And um, he'll shed some more light into this um, condition. Good morning, Doc. Okay. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too. <laughs> right, so uh, that's a very interesting um, story we saw there about migraines. I actually picked up uh, a few signs and symptoms to look out for. But before we get into that, um, can you kind of... Um, Tell us exactly what a migraine is. I mean, I think what we generally know it to be would be a, a throbbing um, headache, usually to one side of the head. Is that what it is? Yeah, the classical description is a headache. It's usually to one side of the head. It's pulsating or thrombing. has some moderate to severe pain. And also comes with them. Um, it's worsened by activity. And sometimes there's nausea, vomiting. And um, the person um, suffering the migraine usually shies away from light and sound. It kind of worsens the, the, the migraine for them. So these are actually the, the classical features of the migraine, migraine headache. Uh, yeah. So what was the difference between a migraine and a headache? Well, a, a, a normal headache will not have these features. Okay. It may be global. It may not have an... And it when it you say global, what do you mean? I mean, it's uh, all over the all head. All over the head. And the whole head. one of the um, most important things is that migraines, um, some of the migraines have got aura. As was described in the video, they may see things... Um, flashing lights, zigzag bright lines in the visual field. They may have some absence, you know, some dark areas in the visual field. Some may have paresthesia and numbness that spread from the arms all the way to the mouth. The headache may be around the eye region and they have um, um, they are irritated by light and sound so they need to be in a quiet dark room. So these these are the things that differentiate migraine headaches from other headaches. Other headaches. Yeah. Okay, so would you say that migraines are more serious or more serious form of headaches? Well, well, um, migra migraines are quite serious, but you know, the headaches can, it, the, it, to, the, to say whether it's serious or not, depend on the cause. If you have a, a headache that's been caused by meningitis, it's obviously going to be more serious than a, a simple migraine headache. Okay. Yeah. So what are the causes of a uh, migraine? Well, the, the, the truth is that um, what exactly causes migraine, we don't know yet, and we are still trying to find out. So um, there are a few theories. We believe um, current evidence pointing towards a problem with the blood vessels. And then a combination of vascular and a neuro, neuro problem. So maybe the nerves and the vessels together. And then we also see, um, new evidence suggesting that free radicals produced in the body, you know, contribute to uh, migraine headaches. Then you have a huge genetic component. About 70% um, of those migraine have got a first degree relative. That's either a parent or a sibling with migraine. So combination of the genetics and an environment if people are exposed to some particular things that precipitate the migraine they tend to suffer from migraines okay so would you say that a lifestyle is a contributory factor uh, yes yeah, several um, observations and studies have shown that stress for example is one of one of the things and in the u.s they realized that people with um, low um, um, household income you know tend to get migraines more than those with so uh, the stress so stress Wor yeah. worrying about anything at all can bring on a, yeah a, a migraine. stress head trauma and some medications can um, bring uh, on, on migraines and so many other things too for example um, oral contraceptives and um, can you know increase the risk of getting the migraine how yeah. is that linked well oh. hormonal hormonal oh, fluctuations no. some migraines come during the menstrual menstrual period. So, yeah, so there's so many of these strong odors and um, changing climate. For example, in the summertime period, people, people get migraines. Yeah, lack of sleep, lack of exercise, and some diets have been implicated, but the evidence is not too strong. Okay. Yeah, are, are some migraines more serious than others, and uh, how do you distinguish or di distinguish yes between the two? Yeah, some migraines are more serious than others. Some may have a, a mild headache. Is it's it won't limit the activities too much. Um, I remember. Um, a colleague doctor had a very bad migraine in, in, in Cape Coast and he had to be admitted. It was so bad. The, the, some, some, there's so much nausea and vomiting. They need to have IV fluids, you know, going down. Oh. And they fear food. They can't stand lights. You know, the headache is so bad, agonizing. Yeah, so some may have mild, some may have very severe. What migraine. about the pain? Well, how much pain is okay or how much pain <laughs> is too much that you need to seek medical attention? Or what exactly do you do when you, when you get a, a, a headache or a migraine? So um, the, the, in managing the migraine, um, the, we have pharma, pharmacological and non-pharmacological. And pain management is key. So um, we give um, painkillers. You know, to relieve the pain because the pain really is quite agonizing for people who suffer migraine. Mm -hmm. If you had one before, I have. I yeah. have had a migraine. Yeah, some people have got severe pain, so we give them analgesics to you know relieve the pain, and then we the the, the treatment involves at, um, aborting the migraine and then preventing the migraine subsequent ones that may that may follow up. So you give painkillers 
and um, you need to relax the patient, put them in a calm, quiet room. You may have to tackle nausea and vomiting if it's present. And the, the, the treatment basically involves um, anti-epileptics, medication for epilepsy, anti-hypertensives, yeah, and then antidepressants, these three. Sometimes you may have to give um, um, things like beta blockers. I don't want to go too much into the, the pharmacology okay. of it, yeah. And then you do, you do relaxation programs. Some of them will need some, you know, behavioral and then these um, um, so, so like psychotherapy and all these things. So you need to relax them. They good relaxation programs. We also have um, things like um, transcutaneous electric um, nerve stimulator that we, we used to.